Hey everybody, welcome back to the Armed Scotsman. Today on the table we have a PSA Jackal. Let's get this going. Alright folks, as I said, this is the PSA Jackal. I have reviewed a Jackal before, it was a different variation, um, and so this one came out after that. I actually really like this variation. I think I like it more than the, the one I did before. Um, so anyway, so this is why I got it in, to go over with you guys. Before we get started, before I forget, everyone always asks me the weight and length and things like that. The weight of this gun without the uh, optic setup in here, and, and obviously this is just an empty mag, without the mag in there, comes in at approximately seven and a half pounds. The overall length is 32 inches from butt to tip. Now bear in mind, this is a 13.7 inch barrel with a pinned and, wed, pinned and welded flash hider. With the buttstock collapsed uh, or folded, which we can, it goes down to 30, excuse me, goes down to 25 inches. So 32 overall, 25 when folded. All right, let's jump in at the back here. We have an F5 stock, which really, uh, one of the big improvements I like personally over the skeleton stock that I had before, it wasn't the most comfortable for a cheek rest. Um, aesthetically it looked pretty cool, but I, I think I do like this one better aesthetically and for actual functionality, I prefer this one. Again, it's each to their own. Um, obviously it looks like, the gun looks like an ACR as well, and the stock obviously helps with that look. So it has a rubber butt pad at the back here, cutie sling attachments on either side. As I mentioned before, it is foldable, or collapsible, foldable. Um, the press the button in there and you can put it in locks in place. So it makes it a little easier for storage or transporting. And obviously with this being a piston driven gun, um, you can, there is no buffer setup back here. Obviously there's no buffer tube, buffer spring, anything like that as you can see. Um, and the gun functions perfectly with this folded over so you can access all the controls and it will fire just fine with that folded. So I do like that a lot. Now with that comes, there's these buttons on the other side for the adjustable stock to get whatever you need. And it does have an adjustable cheek riser. Now, if you try to adjust this while the stock is all the way closed, it, you won't be able to. You've got to open it up at least one step and then you can pull it back and lift it up. So you have that adjustable cheek riser right there. So very nice, gives you some options and lock it all back in place. So I really, I really do like this stock a lot. I'm a fan. Okay, moving along to the upper and lower receiver now. Um, the upper receiver is actually a monolithic upper. So from here all the way to here is one piece of aluminum. Um, and they, they kind of machine that out of, what I was to say, out of one piece of, of aluminum. Um, and so it's a kind of a longer costly process to do that. Monolithic uppers do have their... Um, their benefits though, like there's like with the standard AR-15, you're gonna have the break with the handguard going to the upper receiver. There's no break there, so you can bridge. There's no gap to bridge on this, so putting any optic on you want, um, it won't lose the zero. There, there's not gonna be any rotation of the handguard to, to throw your point of impact off, anything like that. So very cool um, monolithic upper. Um, there's more to go over there, but I'll, I'll touch base on this in just a second. Now moving down to basically the controls. You obviously have a brass deflector right here. Your ejection port is right here. And then you have a standard mag release. The, the lower is a standard AR-15 lower with some cosmetic changes. Essentially, you could take this upper off and stick it on any other AR-15 lower and it should work just fine. But this lower does have some cosmetic changes, which I will show you in a minute. So moving down, um, comes with a Magpul uh, MOE grip right here. It's all polymer. No storage compartment on the bottom. I do like the grip angle of these. Um, I do prefer the K2 Plus grip. Again, that's a personal preference because it, ha it has the rubber over mold, low storage compartment, and it's just more, I'm more, I feel like it's more comfortable. However, this is a nice upgrade with this gun. Now, the thing that I wish that they had, and I did mention it on the, the last video, is I feel like for the price point of these guns, and I'll come to that at the end, and just the day and age that we're in, it really needs to have an ambi safety, in my opinion. They do it on all of their Sabre line. Um, you know, you got those Talon safeties. I would love them to throw in a Talon safety or any ambi safety in here as I feel like it needs it. But that is just, again, my personal opinion. On the other side, as I said, we don't have an ambi safety, but you do have a standard air um, safety right here. You do have 
your uh, bolt catch and release right here. Now, the only thing is you can change pretty much anything out, the grip, the trigger, the safety, but you're not gonna be able to change out the uh, mag release, excuse me, the bolt catch and bolt release here, the way that it's actually cut into the upper receiver. If you put on something different, it's gonna be too wide, it won't fit, and you will have problems. So that's, that's the only thing that you're gonna have to keep as standard, um, as far as I know from, uh, from there. Um, moving down a little further, oh, it comes with one 30 round PMAG if your state allows it. Uh, moving down, you have an enhanced mag pull trigger guard. Love it, I love the curved trigger guards, absolute favorite. I'm glad it's not the straight ones. And it has their EPT trigger. This is their enhanced polish trigger. It's, um, it's a kind of a step up from it. It's a, essentially a mil spec, but a step up. Got a little bit of take up, maybe like a millimeter. Decent clean break. And then you got your reset. Tactile and audible. So it's not, as I say, it is not a bad trigger uh, right out of the box. And then just kind of your typical um, lower, you, you've got this slightly flared out mag well right here for easy insertion of your mags. Okay, actually, before I actually move on up, let's do the wiggle test before I forget. Um, the wiggle test is to see if there's any play between the upper and lower receiver. It doesn't uh, affect the functionality of your gun, so don't worry about it if it's got a little play in there. It's not a big deal. I just like to check it out. I just need somewhere to grab. It's like a tiny little bit of play in there, but nothing really at all, just a little bit. All right, so moving back up here um, to the top, obviously this is an EOTech combo, because somebody's gonna ask me, it's a G5 magnifier, or G45, or whatever it's called, 5X magnifier, EXPS, 3-0 optic, and it sits on top of full length 1913 pick rail, so tons of room to add anything that you might need up here. Um, so no problems whatsoever. Now, I was talking about this upper receiver, being monolithic, which it is, the top piece. This bottom piece right here is actually separated and it's attached by two screws on either side, right here and here, and you can take this on and off as you wish. So that, so even though, as I say, the top is monolithic, this part obviously is not, but it does come with all these M-lock slots at three, six, and nine o'clock position. And then you've got some cutouts along the rail here to help lighten it up a little bit. Overall, I really do like the rail. Um, I think it's nice. It gives you plenty of M-lock slots to add uh, anything that you need. Now, moving to the other side of the, the, the gun right here, obviously this is a side charging handle that we have here, and they upgraded this. This was a little different in the previous model, but now we have this round knurling and has knurling all the way around it. Charging handle with a Jackal logo right there. I can get a really good purchase on that. It's really nice. I really like that upgrade from the previous model that I had. I am a big fan of that indeed. Now, moving up to the top of the rail, you notice there's a cutout here. Now, the other one I had, um, and the ones that they're, they're still available, they do have a handguard that comes and it stops before the actual adjustable gas block, um, and it will stop just before. This one has gotten extended, comes up and covers that adjustable gas block. And I actually like this when I attach my suppressor. The suppressor sits really close to the handguard. I think aesthetically, it looks really good. It obviously, for functionality, it's not really gonna do anything for you, but uh, for aesthetics, um, it looks cool. Uh, but the gas block in here has eight adjustments, now, bear in mind, and just be aware, should I say, if you're out shooting and this thing's getting hot and you make an adjustment, find something to put in here, like an Allen key or a small screwdriver or something, because this will get hot and you will burn yourself if you try to adjust that after you've been shooting for a while. Um, ask me how I know. All right, so just make sure you do that. Um, but other than that, you do have eight adjustments, so you can fine tune this for being suppressed, unsuppressed, whatever ammo you are using. Um, and it's pretty convenient to get to. It's not, it's not hard to get to with the gaps on either side. All right, so moving up to uh, the flash hider. This is a JMAC flash hider. It's a four prong and it has a chemo adapter for your suppressors. Um, one of the key wording of this video is this is a pinned and welded muzzle device because the barrel's a 13.7 inch. And then when you add this muzzle device with it being pinned and welded, it makes it an overall length of 16 inches, which makes, makes this a non NFA item. Uh, because of that pin and welded, so there we go. Underneath this handguard I already mentioned at the start, it has a 13.7 inch barrel chambered in 5.56, so you can shoot 5.56 and 2.33 out of this barrel. It's a one and seven twist and it's a 4150 CMV steel. Uh, decent barrels. Um, we'll go over the accuracy in the later part of the video. We'll take it to the 100 yard range. Now, cosmetically on the outside, I really like these jackals. The fit and finish is really nice. Um, 
the overall quality I think is great. I, again, I think that PSA over the years has really been stepping up their game with their rifles, and I, I feel like the Jackal, although it's a little, it's a little heavier than you would st your standard AR-15. And I really like the combo of the gun. I really like the style of it and the fit and finish. Now, let's go over. We're not done, um, but let's go over. Um, the kind of the cosmetics I mentioned about the lower, we'll have a look at the operating system inside. So to take down, same again, I told you it's in the AR-15 lower, there's the front and back pivot pins. So you're gonna push out, the, just, just push out that back pivot pin for a second, and you'll lift this up. So that's obviously your lowers right here, but you can see, excuse me, your upper right here, but you can see on the lower how this, this is actually attached to the lower, and you can see you've got these extra pieces right here. These are for cosmetics, so when this sits down, Obviously, cosmetically, it looks really good. And the internals, again, it's just an AR-15 trigger. You can change all that out. Now, where the big differences come in with this gun is the operating system, because obviously we have side charging handles. It should be the giveaway. Um, this is an AK-AR hybrid system. So the guide rod looks very similar to an AK, right? And then we'll pull back the charging handle, and then out comes your piston. Again, it looks Looks like a, it looks like an AK, which technically it is. But on the bottom right here, we do have an AR-15 bolt on the bottom. You can see the firing pin back here. Um, so this is an AR-15 bolt with a, kind of an AK piston. So really interesting design. There was one thing that I did forget to mention with this charging handle. Now, just since I've got it apart, I can tell you. Um, this is ambidextrous, and you can switch it to the other side. When all this stuff is out like it is, you would just slide this out. There's a sled inside, what they call a sled. Um, so you take the charging handle out, line up the sled on the other side with the groove right there, put your charger handle back in, and you're good to go. I'm just gonna leave it how it is though. Um, but So it is ambidextrous, again, which I think is, is really nice. So if you do wanna run that, if you're like a right-handed shooter and you wanna run it as an AK, um, you can switch that to the other side so you can do that. All right, that, and that's basically your field disassembly. All right, so we are back together. Let's head off and to the range. We'll do a 100-yard accuracy test with this, and let's see how it does. All right, so let's take a look at these results. This is using PSA's Saber Black 75 grain, um, and it is 100 yards. I did use five rounds. I I think I may have keyholed here, but knowing my luck, it was a flyer. <laughs> so, um, but these are within about approximately one MOA, so not too shabby at all. And that's just using the AOTEC with the magnifier. This was PMC 55 grain, 100 yards. Um, these were pretty good. Um, this one pulled a little bit. So you're probably looking at one and a half MOA here and about one MOA here. These are all sub MOA right there. Again, not too shabby. Um, this one surprised me the most. I did use Black Hills um, ammo, some of the best ammo on the planet for AR-15s. This was the first round that I did, and I was really surprised. I did a second round because I was like, wait, this just doesn't seem right. I took off the suppressor as well, um, and I tightened the group up, but still not as good as I thought it would be, but overall not too bad. Again, these are all taken at 100 yards with an EOTech and a 5X magnifier. All right, so let's talk about shooting it. As I, I, you already seen, obviously, the results there. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with the 100 yard results, and that was just using the 5X magnifier and the EOTech right here. Um, I've gone through about 300 rounds, just kind of mixed uh, PMC, Sabre. Um, I only shot uh, probably 10 of the black kills, no, maybe 15 of the black kills, because um, that stuff is really, really expensive. Overall, shooting was really good. I did have one problem where I'm not exactly sure what happened. I don't know if the round was stuck, like the casing or anything. Um, I'll run the footage, but at one point, something got stuck. I could not pull back the charging handle to eject whatever the issue was. Um, I had to eject the magazine. And eventually, um, just because I'm a little worried how far this EOTech sits over, I was worried about maybe coming back and slamming my hand. So I removed this just to check. But eventually I got it out. I tried to watch it on video. I heard it something drop out. I don't know, again, if it was an empty casing or whatever. That was the only issue that I had, but it was pretty stuck in there but out of the 300 rounds um, that was the only issue that I had um, so overall thoughts I already told you I really like these jackals I think um, cosmetically I think they look freaking awesome um, they're really fun to shoot um, I like the shorter length barrel 
shorter length with the muzzle device pin and weld on here just because i think the overall length is just being a little smaller is better for uh, just for you know for uh, maneuvering and things like that um but overall i love this version i say i love the stock um up the you know the change of the stock i like the the grip um, i'd really like the new charging handle is a big difference and obviously um, having this slightly longer handguard now when i was out there um i did have to manipulate the uh the, the gas setting here when i went when i switched the press to unsuppress i did have to switch it um and it was pretty easy to manipulate it would have been easier obviously if this part wasn't here like the previous version um and then it just kind of made me think when i was manipulating this well, you know if you're going to be taking out the the gas piston obviously there's a detent in here beside this uh, gas block right here so you push this in and you would turn and pull it out and boom Doing all that is going to be a little more difficult. I mean, not not crazy more difficult by any means, but a little bit more difficult than the previous shorter railed version that I had. But other than that, big fan. Um, price point, these are going to cost you. They're all coming in around about the twelve ninety nine mark. Um, they're very cool. As I say, just put that safety, uh, that ambi safety in PSA, and I'll love you. Um, but again, it's an easy change if you want to change that out. But overall. I'm still very happy with these jackals. I think they're still a winner. Um, and they come with a lifetime warranty from PSA. Um, so if you ever have any problems, uh, obviously hit them up. But overall, huge fan. Um, and that's it. All right, folks. That is it from me. Until next week, I'll catch you later.